Um, we had a great speaker, Jaden's Juice, is a great product, great story. I'm, I'm sure a lot of you guys are familiar with CBD and you know sublingual and taking it as a juice. Um, my company, Arx Candy Care, is a skincare company. So I'm going to try to give you guys a little bit of knowledge on how CBD works topically, how it works on your CB2 receptors, and how you can benefit it from it with your skincare routine. So as most of you pretty much know, you know we have the two receptors. We have the CB1s and the CB2s internally and externally for your topical layers. But what a lot of people don't realize is, so how is CBD going to help my skincare? Like, okay, I get it. We can take it under our tongue. We can help with this. We can help with that. But what's it doing transdermally? Is it affecting our skin, our health, our moisture? So um, in our bodies, with our endocannabinoid system, what a lot of people don't realize is that every mammal that has gone through the stage of development produces cannabinoids in the breast ducts, in the mammary glands. So all humans naturally produce cannabinoids in their system. But most of us aren't drinking breast milk, and most of us aren't all smoking marijuana, so we have a lot of dormant receptors that are just sitting there, not doing anything, not absorbing, not metabolizing, and that causes a lot of our issues, a lot of our diseases, a lot of the ailments that we think that we have. So when it comes to skincare, if you think of it, okay, we have natural organic ingredients. Cool, yeah, you have coconut oil, cocoa butter, all these beneficial ingredients in your skincare, but our skin is human skin. We don't actually produce coconut oil in our bodies. We don't produce apple stem cells or retinol or any of these other ingredients. So how is our body supposed to metabolize or absorb or digest, for lack of better words, these ingredients? So when you bind CBD with other beneficial ingredients, it pretty much wakes up your endocannabinoid system and allows these beneficial ingredients to have a purpose. You know, in our skin cells, a lot of this goes into the science. So a lot of what I'm going to be telling you guys, so let me take a step back. I'm a cannabis grower. I've been growing marijuana for 18 years. That's what I do for a living. My little sister has eczema. And she contacted me one day and she's like, hey, Mr. Weed Guy, can't you make me some weed cream? Isn't it supposed to help with my rashes? I'm like, yeah, yeah, let me see what I can do. So from my background, science, chemistry, physics, math, that's where I came from. So formulating an all natural organic body balm, body butter, wasn't very hard. You source the highest quality ingredients from all around the world. You don't cut any corners. You don't add water. You don't add preservatives and all these other ingredients that you don't need if you're actually using the products. Yeah, we do need preservatives. Yeah, we do need all these other emulsifiers and solubilizers. If you're creating a product to have a 10 year shelf life that you can buy mass and sell to you guys, you know, through the course of four or five years. But for people who have real skin conditions, you don't actually have to do that. So I created the all natural organic can of cream at our Arts Can of Cream booth for my sister, helped with her eczema. And initially, yeah, we had THC in it. There's a lot of misconception that, oh, you have to have THC and CBD. You have to have the entourage effect. You don't, you don't have to have the entourage effect. The entourage effect has its own benefits. So CBD is a smaller molecule than THC. Therefore, it binds to the receptor and the back of the receptor, whereas THC absorbs in your receptor. That's why when you smoke marijuana, you get high. Your receptors are now full of THC and you feel euphoria. So CBD is more of a regulator. CBD attaches, like I was saying, to the back of the cannabinoid or to your receptors and pretty much affects how your body is going to receive cannabinoids and other beneficial ingredients. So that goes to back to putting it into your skincare. So we have high quality, you know, facial products, body products, scrubs that everybody uses. All you women and guys, some guys were using skincare products. But when I started looking at my sister's skin conditions, I was like, why is she breaking out? Where is this eczema coming from? There's something has got to be triggering her outbreak. And I started looking into it, and yeah, a lot of it was the preservatives, the solubilizers, the emulsifiers, all these ingredients we're putting in our skincare to make it better when we're actually just increasing the shelf life, making it worse. So once you remove all of that and you use whole flower CBD or even isolate, um, it really enhances the beneficial properties of the ingredients already in your product. So that's where it comes down to the two different concentrations. One of the most biggest, uh, one of the most common questions I get asked is, what separates your company from these other companies, blah, blah, blah. And I try to tell people, it's not a his company, my company, your company, their company. It's mother nature's key ingredient in humans. So what separates my company from the other company? It's nothing. It's the integrity that us as owners, that Jaden, I know that he has the same background because he's doing it out of love. I created the company out of love for my little sister. My friend Megan had breast cancer, so she was using it all through chemotherapy, all through radiation. And it's through these life experiences that we see the beneficial properties of these ingredients 
actually having effect. You know, my own mother has rheumatoid arthritis, very bad, and to the point her hands were curling. They're starting to knuckle up. She had these little bumps forming, and she's like, oh my God, can I take something for this? And when you have your own mother asking you, is this gonna help me? You're not gonna be like, yeah, of course it's gonna help you. Arc Scanicare. No, you're gonna take a little diligence and you're gonna do some research and you're gonna actually see, is there any beneficial properties to these ingredients? Are they actually helping or is it a placebo? So as a cannabis grower, um, I have a lot of friends who are also cannabis growers. And these cannabis growers are growing a lot of the hemp in the nation. So all of the American, USA grown hemp, Colorado, Washington, Oregon, Kentucky, all these states, we're in partnership with a lot of these farms. So what it really comes down to is the growing tactics and how they're growing it, how they're extracting it, and how is the product that they're putting into your skincare and into your other ingredients. Um, it comes a lot to dosing. So a lot of people are like, okay, what's the dose? What should my dose be? What, you know, how much should I be taking sublingually or topically? And anybody that's gonna stand up here and say, hey, you need 300 milligrams of CBD, they're full of crap because your metabolism is different from your metabolism, which is different from your metabolism, which is different from everybody. So there is no standard dose. That's why what we attempted to do with Rx Canicare is instead of standardizing a dose for everybody is create a product that is tested, that's fully vertically integrated to where we're the farmers, we're the manufacturer of the skincare product, we are the ones that are selling you the product. We actually private label, white label for a lot of other companies. So at the end of the day, it's how much control does the person you think you're speaking to have over their product. A lot of companies are like, yeah, here's our product, and they just bought it from someone who just slapped a label on it, don't even know what's in it, and now they're telling you, here's our product, but they're not really making the product themselves. So that's what I tried to bring. Like I'm saying, I'm a cannabis grower. I think it's funny sometimes. I carry on, I run a skincare company and I'm a guy and I grow weed. But at the end of the day, it's my integrity. In the cannabis space, I've been doing side-by-side -side testing for 10 years. So I'll take nutrient versus nutrient, grow technique versus grow technique. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. And I will film it for the cannabis community. So I kind of gained a reputation as a, an authoritative source of if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. You know, there's a lot of misinformation out there on what you should be putting in your bodies, how you should be growing your plants, and what you should be doing. So what we really tried to do at Rx Canicare is get all of the people that are experts in their own field to specialize in what they do best, and then present that information to you guys who need it the most. So um, in infusing the highest quality ingredients with the highest quality uh, base bulk material is what it really starts off to becoming. Um, when it comes more into your skin and your metabolism, which is where we tried to decipher away from the tinctures. There's, tinctures are flooding the market. Everybody knows you can take a tincture, you can smoke a vape, you can do that, but you have two receptors, CB1, CB2. No one is really giving too much um, weight for the CB2 receptor, when actually your skin is the biggest organ in your body. So yeah, cool, your CB1 receptor, central nervous system, all that fun stuff. CB2, the biggest organ in your body. Hmm. Now, if you start looking at your skin and your, your CB2 receptors and what your actual skin is supposed to be doing, 90% of all of the cells in your skin's responsible for nutrient transportation and metabolism. Now, as we've all heard, in the government's own patents, which they've had patents on CBD synthetically and THC since the 70s. In the 70s, they could have got you, you, you in a room and said, hey, you follow steps A through this, did it, did it, did it, and we can make CBD in a lab, and they proved it with a patent. Now, to get a patent, you can't just be like, hey, I think this does something. You have to prove with like documents upon documents, case studies, you have to prove it. It's, it's not an easy task. So they proved in the 70s that CBD cures epilepsy, which is kind of like what he was referring to. Um, it helps with cancer cells, tumor growth, skin conditions, all sorts of things. Um, it wasn't really until about eight years ago when Europe announced um, the seizures to where America kind of woke up. Because we had the patent since the 70s. And Europe was like, hey, it's helping with seizures, everybody. And America's like, hey, we actually got the patent for that, so uh, back off. And it's like, oh, so you've just been letting us die and shrivel up for the last like 40 years while you guys sat on this patent. And then now with the new patent from GW Pharmaceutical, which is recent. So yeah, we're all talking about these old patents. Okay, forget the old patents. A few months, within the last month and a half, a company got a pharmaceutical patent on CBD for epilepsy. 
So all these people, hey, does CBD work? Yes, CBD works. It 100% works. That's why the government's freaking out. That's why they're trying to do all this regulation. That's why they're trying to scare companies like me, companies like Jaden, companies like all these people out here from doing what we're doing, which is providing you guys with something that can help your bodies. Um, at the end of the day, I try to tell people, CBD doesn't do anything. It helps your body help itself. We have receptors in our brain that respond to cannabinoids. There's cannabinoids on the planet. If we take these cannabinoids, we help our body do what our body does. It just makes sense. So why don't we have cannabinoids right now? Well, because the pharmaceutical companies, you know, it's been illegal. Not because of marijuana from THC. There's over 100 compounds in the marijuana plant. CBD, CBN, CBG, THC, THCB, A, blah, 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 I can list on and on. There's only one that gets you high, one. It's called THC. So marijuana has not been illegal because of the one compound that makes you feel not even as high as alcohol, which is legal, but because of the other compounds that cure diseases that they prove, which is bad for the pharmaceutical company, which is bad for their bank book, which is why it's been illegal. So that's pretty much the, thank you. But in essence, um, that's what I really wanted to try to do. You know, I've been growing marijuana my whole life. My earliest memories was a little kid walking through weed fields. So once I helped my sister with skin issues and I started coming over to the skincare realm and I started realizing all the ingredients you women are using, it's toxic. Like half of the crap that you're putting on your body is horrible. You're putting, if you have alcohol in your skincare, the alcohol is drying up your skin. So you need more moisturizer. They're giving you something so that you can buy their something. It, it's completely counterintuitive to the whole purpose of healing yourself. So once I saw the debauchery that was going on and how they're just taking advantage of all you people, because yeah, CBD is huge. It's the biggest thing. It's, it's bigger than anything that's ever been anything. You think something's been big before? Slap CBD in front of it and it's 10 times bigger. And there's billions and billions of dollars flooding into this market because of that. They don't want us to heal ourselves. They want us to take their drugs. So to backtrack again, so this pharmaceutical patented GW pharmaceutical, blah, 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 it's a 1,500 milligram tincture. Are you serious? 1,500 milligrams? We have a 3,000, a 6,000, and a 7,000 milligram in a one ounce bottle. Now, the science behind the tinctures, why I get so frustrated sometimes, is like, okay, a one ounce bottle. There's approximately 20 drops per milliliter. So if you have a one ounce, that's 30 milliliters, that's 600 drops. So if you got a 600 drops in a bottle, in my honest opinion, and I'll say this loud, anybody with a tincture under 600 milligrams in a one ounce bottle is ripping you off. Because that's less than one milligram per drop. So anyone who says, hey, take a full drop of your tongue, okay, let me back you up with some science. You can only absorb a third of a milliliter under your tongue. It's called sublingual, people. It's not called, hey, well, lick the dropper, let's drink the formula. No, <laughs> take it under your tongue. Your saliva glands, where you get all your saliva from, they will actually absorb the CBD if you put it there. A couple of drops under your tongue for 15 to 20 seconds and you're good. You don't need no flavoring. Oh, I got some peppermint tincture. Why, are you eating it? There's no taste buds under your tongue. What do you have flavoring for? So I just started getting sickening by all these companies that were just trying, to, it's marketing, it's marketing, it's marketing. We have this for you, we have that for you. We have a 600 milligram tincture, it's for my dog. Like, why would, it's one milligram per drop. And a new study was just uh, passing that even animals, canines, they need one milligram per pound. Okay, so you got a 50 pound dog and you have a 250 milligram tincture. So you're pretty much giving him a quarter of the bottle a day. So this bottle is gonna last you four days or it's not gonna do anything. So they're pretty much gonna con you into buying something that's not gonna do anything. So again, as a cannabis grower, we are the manufacturers, we are the company. So I was trying to provide the highest quality, most effective with no fillers to you guys at the most affordable price. No, it's not cheaper than the other companies. Yeah, it's more affordable. It's higher quality, it's, you know, and what is higher quality? Higher quality pretty much means are they following the manufacturing through the whole process. Like there's a lot of companies here that are, like, and I love that. I love seeing all these companies here that are really doing their due diligence and trying to supply you guys with quality cannabinoids because there are other places to get cannabinoids. A study was just published, Quinoa has CBD, go figure. Very microscopic amounts, but you, you can get it out of it. So uh, an analogy I try to give people on like, um, you know, hemp, CBD, is it cannabis derived? Okay, back to that. Marijuana CBD is the same thing as hemp CBD. 
Oh my God, did I just say that? Yes, I did. It's the same damn thing, you guys. It's the same plant. The government made up a definition of cannabis CBD and hemp CBD based off the percentage of THC. Okay, so we've all gone grocery shopping, right? We've all got a, a basket of strawberries, right? And you know how there's always that one strawberry that's white? You're like, yeah, I don't want to eat that one. And there's that one big juicy strawberry that's got all the polyphenols, and it's like, wow, this is so juicy. They're still both strawberries, aren't they? You're not calling this like a non-strawberry. No, it's a strawberry. It's just this one's richer in the natural compounds. So the government tried to say, oh, if it's got less than 3% THC or 0.3%, it's THC or it's hemp, that's a lie. So it's just to confuse you guys. They want you guys to be confused so you don't know what you're buying. Hemp seed oil has been around for years. It's been in the market for 20, 30, 40 years. It's hemp seed oil. It comes from cold pressed seeds. You take seeds, you put it in a machine, you press it and it squirts out oil. That is not the same as a flower that has resinous glands that produce cannabinoids. Like, yeah, you're lucky to get some cannabinoids out of the hemp seed, but the actual flower produces cannabinoids on its own. So the legal side of, is it cannabis, is it hemp? Um, I tell you, who's asking me? If you're, if you're a consumer, it's, it's cannabis, you guys, and there's no THC. You will not get high, but you are getting the highest quality CBD extracted from a cannabis sativa L plant. Now, if you're regulatory people, it's hemp. Why? Because we are really good growers and our cannabis has less than 0.3% THC. Sucks for you guys that you made the law that way, but you did. So um, that's another reason why I decided to come up here and you know not take a break from the cannabis space, but try to be a voice for people spreading misinformation. Like I'm saying, it's not the same. I grow cannabis all day, hemp's not the same. It's like, you know, real hemp grows like bamboo. And it's not a male flower. You always say, oh, is your cannabis, it's a male flower, right? No, the second a marijuana plant forms one seed, one seed, it stops producing THC. You know, that's the reason why they were using male cannabis plants for CBD manufacturing because it was their only way of controlling the cannabinoid content. So they're like, oh, let's use a male plant. They don't have THC. We can guarantee that it's going to be all kosher. Da, da, da. No, it's not true. So um, it really comes down to the integrity of the grower. What sets, separates one company from another company, you know, can you speak to the CEO, owner, and founder of the company you're buying your product from? Can you contact him through email and ask him any question about any process of his product? If you cannot, that's not a real company. And if you can, you're speaking with a real company and then you can be rest assured knowing that you are probably using high quality cannabinoids, CBD, um, etc. cetera. Um, so getting further, like I'm trying to keep it as simple to you guys because I could get into a lot of science about the different cells in your body and how, you know, even the laying your hand cells to your, your mitochondria, to your googly bodies, all this stuff you learn in biology. Every cell in your body, 90% of them have two functions, nutrient transportation and metabolism. Everything in your body, your googly bodies and your, your cells, they're supposed to transport nutrients from one cell to the other cell. Okay, so if the government proved in their patent that CBD helps with nutrient transportation and metabolism, and all of these cells in our body, most of them which are on our biggest organ, which is our skin, help with nutrient transportation and metabolism, it makes sense to be adding cannabinoids into your skincare. So that's you know the main pitch behind how CBD helps with your skincare, help, helps enhance the beneficial properties of the ingredients already in your skincare, but you know it can get further into talking about you know you have your isolate, you have your full spectrum oil, you have your water soluble, and now you have all these other different forms of people. Oh, well, we have got a form of this that's never been done. All of these forms of cannabis people, all these CBD forms, they have been around since the beginning of time. It's it's just distillation. Have you ever used an essential oil? How do you think essential oils are made? by multi-fraction distillation. It's not like cannabis people are inventing something new. No, we're actually just doing the same thing other real companies have been doing for years to provide you guys quality raw material. So um, there is a difference though when it comes to skincare because your skin has to absorb and metabolize. So a lot of these companies that are using, um, you know, one, two, three, four ingredients in CBD and trying to sell you like a miracle product, there's nothing in there because they're not enhancing the beneficial properties of anything and they're not using any high quality cosmetic type ingredients to help the further absorption. You know, a lot of CBD comes naturally in hemp seed oil, 
hemp seed oil sits on surface layers of your skin. It's not going to absorb. That's why you feel greasy after using 90% of cannabis creams. Why am I so greasy? Because it's not a skincare product. It's just body butter with cannabis in it. You know, to actually have a product that could absorb through the surface layers of your skin and get into your system and actually do benefits, you have to have chemists. You have to actually have real ingredients. We have PhDs on staff to help us formulate products that minus the CBD are high quality, fully functioning cosmetic pro products. Um, so again, like all this rambling really comes back to the main point. What sets any company from any company apart? The integrity of the person running the company. You know, uh, CBD is not that expensive, guys. It's really not. Like a kilo of CBD, yeah, of course, seven, eight thousand dollars, but that's one million milligrams. So people, oh yeah, so for eight thousand dollars, I can get one million milligrams of CBD. Why the hell are your guys' products a couple hundred dollars? They shouldn't be. It's because they know that you want them, and they know that you will pay anything for them because. Everyone's doing the marketing. The whole world is doing all marketing for CBD cannabis. Like, oh, CBD, hemp, it'll help heal this, help heal that. You're gonna buy the first thing you get exposed to. Oh, here, oh, nice. 250 milligrams in a one ounce bottle? Yeah, this is gonna do nothing other than you know make you use it all and buy it again next time. Um, yeah, you know, at the end of the day, like I say, it really just comes down to you as a consumer having to sift through all the bullcrap marketing that is now flooding your market. You know, when we started our company, there's probably 10, maybe 15 companies out there. There's thousands of companies now. I remember when I first started Arx Candy Care, you could Google CBD skincare, and Google would run out. They'd, they wouldn't even have one full page of like information. Now there's like 600,000 pages of like CBD, da, 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 and it's confusing. And you guys don't know what you're supposed to be doing. It's like you're just trying to find relief for your ailments, you know. And that's why, you know, again, I stand up here trying to be an advocate force because I made it for my sister who had eczema, my best friend who had cancer, my mom, my own mother who's got a plethora of issues. Not to mention the fact that I take it. I got a dog who's aggressive. I give it to my dog. So seeing firsthand how it affects people and being able to share with you guys the stories and then being able to walk into my booth and saying, hey, come check out our manufacturing, come check out our farms, come see whatever it is you wanna see. There's nothing hidden here. We are fully transparent. A lot of these companies are like, oh, where do you manufacture your product? Oh, we can't tell you. Why? Because clearly you don't manufacture it. Okay, that's good to know that you're not in charge of your product. So you might as well just buy CVS brand stuff, you know? Um, and in this stage of the environment, at the pace that it's going, I think it's really important for someone to be standing up here telling you guys, I'm not trying to sell you an RX Canica. I don't care if you buy RX Canica. That's why I private label and white label for a good majority of companies out there. It doesn't have my label. I just want to know that if you guys are using CBD, you are using good CBD. You're using whole flower or even ice, like whole flower isolate. I used to be super anti isolate for a few reasons. Now, isolate. Um, for you, those of you who don't know, is just the isolated molecule. So, you know, full spectrum has got THC, CBN, CBG, all these different compounds. If you use a, a, a multi-pass fractional distillation, you can actually, at different temperatures and different boiling points, fraction off all these other different compounds. So because of legal purposes, um, they didn't want us having THC, we've started fractionizing off CBD, and we've been coming up with CBD isolate. Now, I used to be very, very, very anti-isolate for one reason, because marijuana, hemp plant, whatever you want to call it, is a, a bioaccumulator. When you plant it in the ground, it is going to soak up all the heavy metals, all the toxins that's in the soil. Most of these gardeners out here, like we have partners right now in, in Colorado, they just planted 200 acres, they planted it, they flowered their plants for two weeks, and they ripped up every single plant and threw it away. Oh my God, why'd you do that? Because it's called proper farming, people. If you're not going to bring brand new soil in, you need to rid the soil of any impurities. People aren't doing that. Imported CBD from China, Indonesia, um, all these other places, even Canada, they don't have as strict growing requirements as we do. So yeah, you're growing organically, but your soil is toxic, which means that your plant might have accumulated some toxic compounds that after I'm extracting it, might show up. So the simple analogy is eating an apple. Um, are you gonna pick an apple off of a tree on the side of the freeway? Or would you rather have an apple from the middle of a 300 acre field in the middle of nowhere where planes don't fly over, there's no cars, there's no nothing. So again, it just comes down to, do you know where your product is being sourced from? 
and you know, you can look me up, Thompson Prater, Cali Crop Doc. I, I don't hide from people. I've been, I was on federal felony probation for five years, and I started posting all my grow journals to the world on YouTube. I was the first person in Los Angeles County federal felony probation with medical marijuana. My doctor came, testified on the stands, and I was arrested for marijuana, but allowed medical marijuana while I'm. Wow, isn't that hilarious? This, wow, mindfuck. Okay, so. That's why you have to have trust in the person that's there. Like, if CBD, if there was a higher quality CBD, I would find it and I would put it in my products. I personally didn't invent CBD, no. But I have a brain, I know how to grow, I know science, and I can vet people out. And I can say, hey, are you actually a CBD supplier or are you getting it from somebody who's getting it from somebody who's getting it from somebody who doesn't even know what it's supposed to be doing and then selling me a 200 milligram tincture? You know? So, uh, you know, at the end of the day, you know, you guys have the hardest job, and that's deciphering through all the bullshit. Sorry for lack of better words, but yeah, there is a lot of misinformation out there, and it's gonna be up to you guys to decide what you think works best, you know? And that's why we try to have the most affordable prices. When I started doing white label, private label, my goal was to cut the prices. You know, I have a 3,000 milligram tincture for $100 right now. Why? Not because it's bad business, because I don't want somebody else there selling you snake oil to get your pocketbook. If you use the product and it works, that's gonna increase your, your standard of living, your health, and you're gonna benefit as a human. What's an extra $50 for me when it's just $50, you know? But all, not all the companies, a lot of companies are doing that. So um, really, it just became a passion project for me, I guess, to, you know, not allow this industry to do what it does to any key ingredient to this culture's key ingredient. Now, cannabis has been a part of my life since the beginning of my life, and I didn't want it to be taken advantage. Like, we've already been given a bad rep. You know, my whole life, you know, I was a 4.0 honor student, Dean's List, college, blah, 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 smoked weed since I was seven years old. Seven years old, I was smoking weed. Everyone's saying, oh, you're a little stoner, you're a little drug dealer. Yeah, and they look at me now. I'm smart, I'm not in jail, you know, da, da, da. And it's just this, this facade that is given to people that are cannabis users, you know? And, you know, that's why we're at this event. That's why I'm so glad you guys all came to the World CBD Expo because you can see that it's a different culture that we're trying to emerge from what has been so past, you know? Um, you go to these weed events and everyone just wants to get high. No one cares about healing themselves, even though THC also heals you. It's just the mind state of the individual, they're not looking for healing, they're looking for getting high. So coming here, I was hoping to meet some individuals like yourselves that are interested in how CBD can actually benefit your bodies and how you can actually benefit as a person from a compound that has been here the whole time. It hasn't gone anywhere, it's, nothing's changed, it's the same marijuana plant that we had 20 years ago, 40 years ago, it's better now of course, but it's the same compound. So that's my rant. For all you guys, <laughs> does anybody have any questions or? Yes. I don't know. He has a question up here. Oh, he's got one. I'm specifically interested in pets. Yes. Where did you get the number one milligram per pound? Okay, so. Um, the general consensus that's been around for the last, let's say, three, four years is one milligram per 15 pounds. Um, I was just flying to Colorado to go visit a 200,000 square foot manufacturing facility that is growing all of our CBD now. And I was on the plane and I was researching and I came across this article. I can't remember if it was um, Harvard or Stanford, but it was a very reputable college and they just did um, uh, like a triple blind study with a leading veterinary clinic. And they just announced that uh, dogs, little puppy here, have they, their metabolism, of course, yours is different from a guy's, from a girl's, from the age. Dogs' metabolisms are different from ours as well. So the study was just published stating that they did dogs that had um, hip, hip placements, um, older dogs, younger dogs, anxious dogs, aggressive dogs, and they found that um, dogs can take up to one milligram per pound as opposed to per 15 pounds. So to me, it's still anecdotal because I, I came across information about six days ago, and three days ago, I'm online trying to find, like, do I need to find this? Like, where was that that I came across it? And, 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 and I couldn't even find it. I'm like, okay. So, but even, it even goes to show how confusing it is for us because um, it's still illegal, technically, federally, if you're gonna be using it cannabis-derived. So you're not gonna get any pharmaceutical case studies. You're not gonna get anything that's like etched in stone proof. Even the GW pharmaceutical patent that they got on Isolate, they screwed all of us. Not you guys, but me and all my partners in these companies because for the last year and a half, 
isolate, isolate. Everybody needs isolate, isolate, isolate. That was a joke. That was to get us to incorporate isolate so that they could drop $3 million on a case study and prove that it helps with epilepsy so that they could then patent the molecule and add a cause to it. So, you know, when are we gonna find for sure the actual dose for dogs or for humans? Who knows? Hopefully within the next year because there's enough money and there's enough educational sources doing the research. But yeah, that was a new little bit. I, six days ago, I just read it. But it seemed to have come from a, a validatable source. Hi, thanks for speaking today. Yes. Uh, what about topical application for pets? So um, yes, I'm glad you brought that up. I actually have a friend who had um, a golden retriever, he's about 15 years old, and he had mange, to where he was, I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with mange, like the skin starts rotting on itself, and this dog was eating its butt off. There was no hair growing, a patch about, th a patch about this big on his butt, and um, I was helping him grow, I was consulting his grow, and I was like, hey, why don't you put the can of cream on your dog's butt? He's like, oh, is it gonna help with that? I'm like, yeah, dude. So I got him a can of cream, and he wiped it on the dog's butt. Within a week, I'm not joking and not exaggerating, a week later, I went there and hair was starting to grow where for the last 10 years of this dog's life it had been eating its butt um, again like the dogs are mammals every mammal on the planet whether not even humans or dogs all mammals have an endocannabinoid system which means you have a CB1 and a CB2 receptor which means you know in their skin it's also the biggest organ on their body because it's the biggest organ on any mammal's body um, so it is going to still you know they proved it in their patent. So all I can keep pointing to is like, hey, if they proved it in a patent, nutrient transportation and metabolism, and if it, that's what seems to be helping with our skin, then it makes sense that you can apply that same rhetoric to everything. You know, it's like, you know, what's, what's the problem with, you know, even diabetes, I get asked that all, diabetes. My dad had stage two diabetes. Um, CBD can help with diabetes. Well, what is diabetes? Your body's inability to metabolize sugar. Hmm makes sense to where if you have something that helps your body help itself that's why i always say that cbd doesn't do anything it helps your body help itself it helps your body do what your body already wants to do but just can't do it because the oxygen is pollution the water is pollution the skin care is pollution everything the bath water is pollution so we're doing things every single day to hinder our body's ability to run at its most optimal state where they proved it in the 70s that this is all you really needed to do so as far as topically for dogs you know yeah, um, I have a dog, she's got two cancer lumps, and of course the cancer lumps aren't, aren't shrinking, but yeah, I'm putting creams on it, I'm putting tinctures on it, and she's not scratching it as much, she's still a vibrant little dog, you know? Um, like I say, until we get a more approval from you know mainstream and from the government to actually do the tests that have to be done properly, it's like, yeah, I can have a dog, and I can t you know take notes of how its condition is and then like give it product, but that's not a real case study. It needs to be done in a real environment where they're actually allowing us to properly document you know the procedure. So until that happens, everything is pretty much going to be hearsay or kind of just like speculative. But um, I personally have seen it. My friends with Mange, um, and just knowing, like I'm saying, mammals, endocannabinoid system, the science doesn't lie. Any other questions up here? Hold on, sir. Uh, I'd like to know, uh, trying to understand how to buy this. And you're saying that you have, to, it's better to buy uh, a thousand milligram one ounce bottle versus a five hundred milligram one yes. ounce bottle. Yes. Um, in my opinion, and the highest the, concentration. Talk about the ratios too. Oh uh, yeah. So the ratios. Um, I say the highest concentration you can afford, the better. Like that's why I have a 7,000 milligram and a 6,000 milligram, which is 10 milligrams per drop. Now, we have a 400 milligram in a two ounce bottle and then a 600, but to me, those are only to help people who have a, a price point. You know, it's like, if I'm like, here, $200 for this miracle bottle, you're like, yeah, sure, $200, you know, yeah, you know, I'm not giving you 200 bucks. So, um, of course, marketing and av we had to create a product that could fit the market point, but yes, um, as a human, as far as what we think we know, 20 milligrams is the standard dose per, for someone who's just trying to maintain homeostasis. Um, I personally take about one, two, three drops. I have a 14,000 milligram in a one ounce bottle. So my formula is actually just pure distillate. I don't even put any MCT oil in it. I don't water it down at all because I don't want to. I want as much CBD as I can take under my tongue at any given time, but that bottle would cost four or $500 for a consumer. Um, so at the end of the day, 
you can only absorb X amount under your tongue, depending on how big you are. Uh, if you have a five, 500 is too small. A 600 is too small for a human. At 600 milligrams per one ounce bottle, that's one milligram per drop. If you wanted to take 20 milligrams right now, you would have to take a full dropper. But under your tongue, scientifically proven from countless studies of science, you can only absorb 0.3 milliliters of substance under your tongue in a 15 minute period. So why would anybody tell you to take more than what's, what's a third of 20? Seven drops. So anything less than seven drops to get 20 milligrams is snake oil, in my opinion. Um, so that's the only reason why, what's better to buy? I guess, yeah, I guess you could buy the 600 milligram and just take more and more and more of it. But, um, you know, my mom had her uh, arthritis, uh, my friend Megan with her cancer. The people that I'm talking with, they're not just trying to maintain homeostasis. A lot of these people, they're at their last leg. They're like, hey, like my skin's falling off. We have this little six-year-old girl um, who just found my sales team about a week and a half ago. She's got ichiotosis. It's like a one in a million type disease. Her, from head to toe, six years old, covered in, it looks like snake skin. They call it, it's called fish scale skin. It's like she can't even close her eyes because her skin is so tight. And um, one of our distributors uh, met our sales team, gave some product to her dad. And for the first time in two weeks, she's sending me pictures. She closed her eyes within a quarter inch of being shut. The doctors were scared she was going to go blind because she can't close her eyes. And the sunlight's hitting it. She's not getting moisture from her tear ducts. And it was just like, whoa. There's this little six-year-old girl sends me a picture to my personal cell phone, like excited that she ran out of the cream. And it's like, you can't force a kid or a girl in those conditions to lie. If she's not feeling good, she's not gonna. She's not gonna tell you she's feeling good. And when a girl like that comes to me and her dad says, "Hey, my daughter's got this. She's been dealing with her whole life. What can I give her?" I wouldn't be able to sleep at night if I gave that girl a thousand milligram teacher or even a three thousand milligram teacher. She needs a six thousand milligram teacher. She needs to take as much as she can possibly take under her tongue at any given moment to hopefully help her body help itself. Because that's all we're trying to do is just increase the you know the quality of life. Um, and since they're not allowing us to do the studies that we need to do, that we need to prove, oh, how much uh, CBD is, oh, not to sidetrack, this whole nano and the, the bioavailability, I call bullshit on a lot of that too, because it's not proven. Cool, you prove that your molecule is X amount times smaller, but you didn't prove that my body metabolized it quicker or is metabolizing it more so a lot of that is an advertising play we have a company out there um, I'm not gonna say their name but there's a company they have a water and they have a nano in it and they say there's 20 milligrams in their water because it's nano fused it's 10 times bioavailability tested there's two milligrams he's putting two milligrams in this water but because he claims there's bioavailability he's telling you it's 20 it's full of shit and that's wrong and so in my mind the most that you can afford, the highest concentration, that's why we have the highest concentration at the lowest affordable price. And, and some of these products I don't even put through distribution. I don't allow them to go through distribution channels because a distribution company, they want to make too much. The wholesale company distribution, it's not about like making money. I'm not trying to make a billion dollars off of you guys. And it's like, if I want to go into distribution, like, oh, well, we need to make a 30% margin and we have to sell it to them for 30% margin. So I'm like forcing myself to like, add money to the price just to give it to someone to sell it to you guys that's why our products are so affordable at so high concentration because that's not why i'm in it i'm not in it to be in walmart at some you know cvs style brand of like 100 milligrams per bottle you know i'm here to give you the highest concentration highest quality you can get and that's it you know there's plenty of other companies that are willing to do that that type of marketing that type of business and that's just, i'm not going to sleep at night doing that that go ahead. did that answer your question Awesome, thank you. Is the concentration important in skincare products? Yes and no. Again, the research they're allowing us to do is the research they're allowing us to do. I've recently come up with my own um, explanation of the two types of CBD can be in your skincare. Our, for instance, our can of cream, it's a two ounce jar, so there's 60 milliliters, and there is 600 milligrams in a two ounce jar. That's 10 milligrams per milliliter. That is enough CBD for CBD to be the active ingredient. Because technically, even with any high-end quality skincare, at over 2% of an active ingredient, or 2% of any ingredient, it becomes an active ingredient. So when you're using 600 milligrams in a 600 or 60 milliliter bottle, yeah, CBD is the active ingredient, and it's helping your receptors really do what your receptors do, is like waking up your whole system. 
whereas our Canna Cosmetics products, those are high quality facial products. So minus the CBD, we have the alanine, we have um, like the, the retinol, the apple stem cells. Some of these ingredients are already world renowned, like wow, these are amazing. So on those products, we'll have 60 milligrams in a, a 30 milliliter. So it's two milligrams per milliliter. And in that sense, it's an activator. So you can either have an active ingredient or an activator ingredient. So like I am saying, on high end facial products, you already have a lot of beneficial ingredients. So we're trying to activate those ingredients and enhance their beneficial properties. Whereas the can of cream, which is more for like eczema and psoriasis, we want the CBD to do what the CBD does. Thank you. Hi. How are you doing? For the dog that had mange, yes. now I don't know exactly what mange is caused from. Is it a bacterial infection? Um, I couldn't quote, but I'm pretty sure when the research I did before I gave it to me, it's a bacterial infection, and because they keep biting at it, they keep it's like an open sore that never heals. So, so normally they give dogs, you know, antibiotics for this sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And like my dog currently has a skin infection, and, and we both, the vet and I said, well, we don't want to give them antibiotics because his stomach is so sensitive starts a whole nother problem. Yep. So the question is, is that I don't quite understand how, how the CBD would impact a bacterial infection, like the mange, but it's just curious, how does that work? Well, because the dog's own natural system, the, the dog has its own immune system, the dog is going to fight off the bacterial infection. So um, as far as the like eczema, psoriasis, and the rashes, it's because the can of cream is a coconut oil, cocoa butter, shea butter, neroli, beeswax. There's all sorts of other ingredients that create a moisture retentive barrier to where, and because it's all organic, he can lick the can of cream off his ass and it's not gonna cause him any internal harm, but it's gonna create a moisture barrier. The reason the dog licks its butt and bites the butt is because it's drying out. It's because the skin, like um, a lot of people, the, uh, the, a uh, couple had lupus, this lady I was working with, and um, the main thing that they were dealing with, um, a lot of these skin issues, even with the eczema psoriasis, uh, say you have an outbreak of eczema. The reason why it itches is because the skin that's not outbroken is next to the skin that is outbroken, and they're fighting for moisture. They're literally battling for moisture and for healthy of the skin. Same with the dog that's got mange. There's a small little viral infection, and there's, it's next to healthy skin. It's got all the beneficial lipids and you know the sebum that the skin's naturally producing, but it's being stripped from it because of the infection. So the dog licks it, and it licks it, and licks it, and then it over moistens it with moisture, and it doesn't allow it to properly heal. Whereas the beeswax and the cocoa butter, um, yeah, they make it feel moist as well, but you put it on a scab, it's gonna heal, because they're organic ingredients. They create a moisture barrier, you know, that doesn't over dry up, and like I saying, it really helps the body help itself, you know? Um, that's the best thing I could, you know, summarize. Hi. Hi, Doug. I must have missed the um, answer. So my question is, hemp-derived CBD with less than 0.3% THC is federally legal, correct? Yes. And uh, not a controlled substance, nor on the CASA, correct? Yes and no. Um, that element depends on the farm. Like, just because, like, if I pulled out a bag of less than 0.3 THC, Yes, technically because of the percentage it's legal, but still they're, you know, they have a farm bill act. There is a whole checks and balances, a whole system that the actual farm that's growing this alleged 0.3% below uh, THC has to verify. So, but yeah, technically like the farms that we work with, they provide all the documentation, seed to tract where really all it comes down to is the government wants to get paid for everything. If you're using, okay, this is the real thing. All these products in here do not have to pay cannabis tax but they're cannabis. If you go right across the street to a dispensary, you're looking at 30 to 40% tax. The government's pissed because they didn't make 30 to 40% off all the money I made last year or all the money these companies made last year because of their improper labeling of what the compound was. So they're trying to say, oh, it's gonna have point this. In order to prove that your product doesn't have 0.3 da da da, it's an expensive process. Just the test alone is $100 just on the final product, but imagine growing it. You have to say, okay, I have a field. So this is a 100,000 square foot, this building that we're in right now. So if you were to fill this with 20,000 plants, you have to actually have a document and show where did you get every single seed that you planted. And then you have to tag every single plant. And when you harvest it, you have to weigh every single plant. And you have to, you have to say that, hey, we yielded 20 tons of biomass, that 20 pounds extracted, da 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 da, da and 
that process is very expensive because the facilities that do that are also regulated and they have fees. So if you were to add up all these small little sub fees that every little step of the way you have to pay, that's all they're doing it. They don't really care. They just want their money and they're doing it to get the money. So technically, yes, it is legal because um, of their definition. Now, whether they're gonna put it on it, like I have farms that their, their product does come out at less than 0.3% but they're not a part of the Farm Bill Act because they didn't pay X amount of thousands of dollars to register their area and blah, 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 blah. So um, a lot of that's gonna change soon though. But yeah, for the most part, if it's got less than 0.3, it is legal. And that's why the government's upset because they allowed that and they screwed up and they're trying to go back on it by saying, oh, only if it's isolate or only if it's whole flour. And you know, whole flour, CBD, um, before you isolate the CBD molecule, it can spike at certain periods to where you might have a hemp plant that's growing at 0.3% THC, but once you put it into a, an ethanol machine or an extraction machine and you extract all the compounds, that 0.3 might concentrate up to like 0.6 or 0.8 or even 1.2. So in that instance, before you take out the THC, you are now illegal. So that's the whole government thing. And then they're making you be a part of a cannabis company so that they can further get money for licensing and regulation. Any more questions? Back. And this will be the last question. We need to move into our next yep. speaker. I, I think you answered this already, but I want clarification. So sublingually, you can only absorb so much, but through your skin, how does that work? Um, yeah, again, the, the, t the case studies haven't really been done, and I'm always, I'd rather have it and not need it than need it and not have it. My skin's pretty big surface area, and it's like, um, if you're going for your elbow and you're only putting it here, how do you know that putting it here isn't also helping your arm? So it's like, there, to, to, to quickly answer it, there is no, no one knows right now. Um, that's why there's a lot of misconception of this bioavailability and a lot of companies saying, oh, this is gonna be 10 times more effective because of something that we think we know is true. It's like, well, we don't really know. So like, I'm not gonna just believe it just because they say it. And I think that's it, guys. Thank you. If you have any other questions, anybody, we're in the back, Rx Kanaker booth. Um, I talk a lot, so feel free to ask me any questions you want there. There will be an again. open panel as well, which you are more than welcome to be part of. The open panel is after our next lecturer. Awesome. Michael Moskowitz.